Hello, welcome back. Today I want to show the work that I've done with my sensor brackets, that big pile of things I have right here. It turns out there's actually a lot of stuff I had to do with them um, to get them into the machine. So the first step after the couple of other parts that I've shown with them already um, was to tape foam to the top of them uh, for padding. So all of those in the pile on the right have foam on them. I'm just doing the last three now. So the machine shop uh, for some reason gave me 36 of these when I ordered 32. I don't know if they screwed up on a few of them and gave me the rejects or got their numbers wrong or I got my numbers wrong when I placed the order, uh, but somehow I ended up with four extra, which kind of came in handy. Um, so I happen to be taping foam to 33 of them just in case one of those doesn't work, then I have a few extras for other things and you'll see some uses that I found for them a bit later in the video. So this is just some random double-sided carpet tape, I think. Um, I'm just marking out the width of one of those uh, blocks of foam. I've cut them all to size to match the, uh, the area on the top of the sensor bracket. If I were doing this again, I would make the sensor brackets slightly larger. Uh, the protrusion on the top is just barely long enough to, uh, to cover the sensor. I think the Pump It Up ones are a lot wider. Um, the template I was using for these when I made the specification was um, the inside of a DDR machine that I got to play around with right before I started this project. I think the DDR sensor brackets are not quite as long um, on the top as the Pump It Up and In The Groove ones. Uh, and it does make a little bit of a difference, but there's enough space to do what I want to do here. So I just cut that tape into three pieces so it'll fit on the thing, apply to the foam, Peel off the, uh, the non-adhesive back of the thing. It always takes a little bit to, to peel the, the protective layer without the adhesive itself. But it's kind of fun. Peeling things is just one of those things that's... Why is that so enjoyable? I don't know what it is about it. It's just, <laughs> it's just nice to do. I was worried those might not stick to the metal because I tried putting masking tape on some of my other metal parts and it just did not stick in the slightest, uh, but this is much stronger tape and has no trouble. When I got all of these metal parts back from the shop, uh, they were all dirty and greasy, so I gave all of them a bath. Um, it helped a little bit, but I certainly could have, um, could have cleaned them off better. Metalworking is a dirty process, apparently. So the padding here um, helps hold the aero panels up a little bit. I've, I've gone over this when I was assembling the things. But yeah, these get padding on them. The uh, corner stoppers are the same height and also get padding on them. So it gives the aero just a little bit of, not exactly springiness to it, but um, a little bit of leeway so that it's not just sitting on hard things everywhere. And uh, this is where I would adjust the height of... Uh, any components that might not line up exactly, I would make the foam just slightly thicker or, you know, put a couple of extra pieces of tape on top of it to rise it, uh, rise it up just a little bit. Um, I don't know how much of that I'm going to need to do yet. That will, that's going to be very late in the process. Perhaps th that'll be basically the final thing I do before the pad is ready to use. So those are the extra, some of the extra sensor brackets, right? These were my rejects. Uh, they weren't, I'm trying to show how they're bent at the top. Some of them are not, not flat all the way. Um, yeah, you can kind of see how that one's bent farther on one side than on the other. It's a little hard to show in the camera. But yeah, those are the ones I decided to leave out. And I have one more somewhere. I only had three. Oh wait, no, I don't. That's all of them. I just taped foam to one extra. So I have one extra with foam and then three more extras without it. So the way these need to mount is that um, on 14 of these horizontal cross pieces and then a bunch of others, it's 32 total, um, I need to install threaded inserts which go into the wood and um, they fasten to the wood and then have a machined hole on the inside so that I can screw machine screws into the the insert and have the sensor brackets against those because this is a component that I might need to unscrew and rescrew and I don't want to be doing that into wood because 
screwing into wood is something that is ideally only done once or as few times as possible because wooden holes tend to strip over time and not hold screws as well. So that's why I wanted the threaded inserts for this sort of thing. I have them incorporated into other parts of the thing too. So I measured out three and a half inches from the edge to the center of the sensor bracket. Then just drew out the outline of where all the holes are. Now I'm just kind of eyeballing, trying to put a line in the center, both vertically and horizontally, for each one of those holes. So the way I measured was with the sensor in place, um, then I'm taking the center of that to be where the screw position is going to be. Uh, so this, the bracket will have a little bit of leeway up and down from there, because the idea is these things need to be able to move freely up and down um, when, they're, when they're screwed into place. So getting ready to drill those. I tried a large number of different techniques for this. This is actually after several iterations, and you're going to see a, a much better way to do it later. Uh, this this kind of semi-worked sometimes, but not always. <laughs> Um, I have a drill guide tool now, uh, that kind of acts a little bit like a drill press, although it's not nearly as good. I'm sure that'll show up as I do more work on this stuff later, uh, certainly when I'm doing the final assembly of the frame, which hopefully will happen soonish, but there are still a few things that need to happen before that. Uh, but I tried that and it just did not work well for this, uh, so I just end up freehanding it. Now I'm using one of my spare sensor brackets as a um, sort of as a drill guide. I have put it into place and matched it up with the um, the things that I've drawn there. I haven't done a perfect job. I'll fix this up a little bit better later. Uh, right, so I'm using a fourth inch drill bit. I tried pre-drilling uh, with a smaller drill bit and it didn't actually seem to help. It was better to just go straight to the big one for this. And so I unplug it to show that I have, it's really hard to see here, but there's a little rubber band around it, which matches the, uh, is a little bit deeper than the depth of the threaded insert. So that tells me how far I want to drill. Uh, the rubber band just seemed like the, the easy, simple solution to, uh, to give me some sort of depth guide. So I'm trying to drill just until that's right about touching the surface. So get in a little hole I made, and do what I can. So the main problem with what I'm doing here is that although I do have a bracket in place, so first I tried just marking those holes and then freehanding the drill without, um, without the bracket in place while drilling. That worked terribly. Um, this needs to be very precisely done, as it turns out. And you'll see why I need so much precision in a little bit once I actually put the screws in and everything. Um, yeah, so basically I have the sensor bracket there to guide the drill bit horizontally, but it's not really doing it vertically because those holes are tall so that the thing can slide up and down. I do find a solution for that later after I've done this. So I drill kind of slow with this. For some reason, this particular drill bit... Yeah, I'm putting like almost no downward pressure on the drill. For some reason, this particular drill bit really wants to just suddenly sink into the wood very rapidly. So I have to control it carefully so it doesn't just uh, go down and, you know, instead of cutting a hole, it just sort of screws itself into the wood and doesn't cut the, the other sides of the hole. Uh, but if I go slowly and carefully, I can prevent that. So those three are drilled. Uh, next up is threaded inserts. So installing these things is kind of interesting. There are apparently a few different ways to do it. I looked around online and watched a bunch of videos and read about how people do it. Seemingly the, the agreed wisdom is to use a bolt in a drill press with two nuts on it uh, tightened up to the um, uh, tightened up to the insert to hold it in place by friction. Um, but I, bolts for this size, this is a number eight machine screw. Um, bolts for that size of thing just don't exist. Uh, so I just got a really long screw and I'm going to install it with a screwdriver, which works okay. 
So that threads onto there. There's a better close-up of this later, uh, so you can see the process in more detail. But basically, I thread the insert onto there, um, tighten up the bolts as best I can with a wrench. I have the screwdriver on the other side to sort of hold the, the long screw in place, because otherwise it would want to rotate along with the wrenching, because that's the, that's the only way I can get any kind of grip on it. It doesn't take too much force to do this step, because as I screw in, things just sort of move into the right place. So I'm tucking any of the extra little chips of wood that sort of got pulled up by the drill into the holes, because the insert can kind of just push them inward and make a nice, clean, flat surface, which will also be sanded afterward, but might as well make it as clean as I can first. So I can feel what's going on here as I'm screwing, uh, and also I, I'm watching the nuts at the bottom of that. If the nuts are rotating, I'm doing it right. If the nuts are not rotating, then the screw is just going through them and screwing into the insert farther, which is not what I want. So with that in, next step, I use my third hand here. <laughs> People have told me to use sh uh, wear shoes while I'm doing this, but I sometimes need one of my feet for stuff, and shoes would be inconvenient. So right, the um, the next step is to loosen up the bolts without rotating the screw. Uh, bolts, nuts. <laughs> that, those terms are easy to confuse. So loosen up the bolts again, keep the screw in place. So basically the, the friction is relieved from the insert that's in there. So that then the screw can move freely again and just screw right back out of it. The reason there are two nuts is only semi-clear to me. Like, the one snugs up against the um, the insert, then the other snugs up against the other nut just to keep it in place a little better. It, it seemed to make sense. So that's one installed. So there's a nice threaded hole there that a machine screw can go into. Number two, same process. Screw it on there, get the nuts tightened up. So this wrench, this is a, what do they call this, a monkey wrench, I think? Um, I think adjustable wrench? No, wait, a monkey wrench is something else. I'm forgetting my tool terminology here, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, this adjustable wrench kind of did the job, but I really am thinking I need to get a, uh, a fixed size wrench for this because it was really, really a pain to be continually adjusting the... Uh, the size of the uh, the tightness of the wrench as I do this because it kept kept getting out of alignment. I need to do right, like I said, thirty. I need to install thirty-two of these total, and it's a very labor-intensive process. It was like twenty minutes on one of these if it goes well. Um, so I need to do that thirty-two times to be done with this. Not all of them are going into uh, wooden pieces this size. Some of the larger wood pieces get um, get these in them. I have a lot of... Well, I have one actual extra of these um, 7 and 3 quarters inch 2x3 uh, pieces that I'm screwing into now. But I, I have more leeway than that for screwing up here, uh, which I do many times, so I kind of need it. <laughs> Um, but basically, like, if I put three little holes in a pattern like this in one of these, it doesn't really compromise the structure too much. I can just stick that in a place where, where the holes are not needed, grab another one, and redo this if I mess up. But yeah, this was very much a learning process. Alright, insert number two installed, third hand, useful again. I could use a clamp somehow. I wish I had a better space than my uh, my floor here. <laughs> I have a table that would work just fine as a work table, but the problem is it is completely full of components for this project. And there's just no other place to put them. I'm just severely short on space for this. <laughs> and if I'm this short on space in my house, I probably shouldn't be, you know, putting a full-size dance arcade machine in it. But I'll make it work somehow. All right, number three, tighten up nuts. There are a few different ways to hold the screwdriver here. You'll see um, 
some different ways later. Uh, as I said before, people recommend just getting a bolt, uh, cutting off the head of it, and putting it into a drill chuck um, for this sort of thing, which would work a lot better, but these long screws are what I have, so a screwdriver goes in the end of them. So these three go in without too much fuss. Uh, another recommendation I heard was to rub them with wax before inserting them. Um, I should have tried that. I didn't try it, but yeah, I, I'm not sure what difference it makes exactly, whether it makes it go in easier or holds better, because I did notice once I had these in and then started screwing uh, screws into them, if I'd tightened up the screw a little more, I could certainly feel the insert moving around a little bit, so I couldn't like super tighten the screw. That's probably what the wax is for. I'll try that with some of the later ones and see how it goes. All right, so there's the pattern that's needed for the sensor bracket. All done. Next step is to sand it down a little bit because a piece of metal is going to be sliding up and down along that surface, so it needs to be smooth. Normally, I really cannot stand the sound of sanding and need to wear ear, ear protection to be able to do it at all, but for some reason on this particular wood, it's not too bad. And I don't have to do it for very long. But yeah, sanding is one of just, like, just about the most horrible sound in the world for me, usually. So, um, I did this a little bit in a previous video, um, but I need to do it more here. I'm using a file on the inside of the holes, um, both sides of the inside of all three holes of each sensor bracket, which ugh, took a long time to get that done. I'm just doing it one by one as I install these, but I, I've done it for all the rest of them now. Um, the spacers that I'm putting in uh, to let the screws tighten down while still allowing those to move freely, they're a very tight fit, and any kind of protrusion or roughness or anything on the inside of those holes will make them not move up and down smoothly. So using the file removes any kind of um, little poking out bits or whatever, just sort of levels it out and makes it all move much more nicely. Now, the file on its own, as I found out, is not actually enough to make this all work. Uh, I need another additional ingredient after that. But we'll get there in a bit. So all six of those surfaces have been filed down in that bracket now. So, screws. As I said, short little number eight machine screws is the size. Washers. And then a spacer for each one. Aluminumspacers.com, I think, is the place where I got these. I just found the ones that were closest to the size that I needed for it. Um, at some point, I'm going to do a video on sources of parts, costs of everything, um, how all that stuff breaks down, because the first, like, month or two of this project was just tracking down suppliers and parts and figuring out all the stuff I needed, ordering it, getting stuff in, realizing I needed to order something else, reordering it. <laughs> I definitely had a lot of extra overhead in shipping costs because I ordered, like, from the same place five times and on different occasions. Uh, if I had known every specific part I needed to order ahead of time, I could have saved a lot by just ordering them all at once. Save a lot of time, too. All right, screws are in. Let's test how it moves up and down. There are problems. I can get it stuck very easily. And once it's stuck, it's very stubborn. 
does not want to move at all. So I play with it a little more, try to figure out what needs to happen. It's not a problem with the screws being over tightened because the spacers are in there to to make that not a problem. So take them all back out because I gotta mess with it some more. So I work at this with a file for a little bit longer, which mm, doesn't actually particularly help. But I figure it might be a good idea anyway. So like I mentioned when I was using the rasp on the sheet metal earlier, the file, similarly, actually does rough up the surface of the metal just a little bit. I don't know what I would do to get it smoother again. I guess like a finer file after that, if I if I could find such a thing. Um, but I have a different solution that works just as well. WD-40. There might be smarter ways to apply this. I just spray it on a Q-tip and then use that to apply it to the inside of this. So screws go back in, and this time it moves up and down reasonably freely, as free as it needs to be for my purposes. Just needed a little bit of lubrication. I'm hoping that won't wear off. Like, I would hate to have to open this up and reapply that. I also don't feel like I should be spraying that stuff on bare wood. Maybe it wouldn't be a problem, but that's why I went to the trouble of taking that off and applying it the way that I did. Um, I guess that's something that I'm going to find out after using this for a little while. So that's one done. I think at this point I had like four rejects already and had finished three, so my, my success-failure ratio wasn't too good. This is a failure here. You can see that does not sit level at all. Um, if I put the sensor in, all the pressure uh, from this perspective is going on the left side. The right side actually has a little bit of extra wiggle room. So I figured, you know, that's probably not a good idea to do it that way. So I'm going to have to redo that one. This was the main problem with the drilling technique that I used. Um, because I had I had a horizontal guide, but not a vertical one. So if, if vertically I was even just a slight bit out of alignment, um, then the, the thing just would not sit flush. So it took me a little while to come up with a solution for that. But fortunately, after these threaded inserts are installed, there is a way to recover them. So it's very similar to the way they're installed. Um, they just get recovered by screwing that same sort of thing in and tightening it down real good. Um, yeah, this one takes takes a lot of tightening. Once it's tight enough, though, I uh, can just kind of unscrew it slowly, and the insert comes right back out. I can feel if it's working. Um, like, if there's if there's a decent amount of resistance, the insert is probably coming along. If there's not as much, then the screw is probably just unscrewing from it. So the idea is just to get the nuts tight enough so that the friction between them and the... Um, uh, the insert is greater than the friction between the insert and the wood, so that it can actually unscrew. This is the hard part here. <laughs> Detaching the nuts after tightening them down that much. I'm not holding the screwdriver super well here. Uh, eventually I figure out a better way to do it. Got the one. This one wasn't too stubborn. And there's the other one. Insert recovered. So that piece of wood is just going to go on to be one of the structural pieces of wood that doesn't need to face inward on an arrow. Um, which will be fine. Just those extra holes, like I said, should not particularly compromise the structural integrity of the whole thing. So 
so that I, I could feel that the insert was not moving. Third hand comes in to help out again. <laughs> so I needed to tighten that down more. The second one was extremely stubborn. Uh, I had to try this several times. Still was not working. So got to tighten more. Finally, it starts to come out. I skipped a few uh, iterations of that. I had to had to retry and retighten several times to get this to actually move at all. Now, I had to tighten that so much that I am unable to move these nuts, at least in this position, because they are tightened down super well, and I don't have enough grip on the screwdriver and stuff to do that. So I tried this position. Works much better just to put it down against a surface. I can get a lot more power. And finally, I managed to make the whole thing move. Enough for that to come off. Now those nuts are kind of beat up at this point, and as it turns out, the screw is too. <laughs> um, I actually end up discarding this screw and using another one, because I happen to have a spare. Uh, two spares, in fact. Um, just for this sort of occasion, because yeah, I tightened those down so much that I guess it damaged the threads in some way, because things would not happily uh, go onto it after I had after I had taken out that second insert. They just sort of get stuck after half an inch or so. So all three inserts are covered. The beaten up nuts get discarded so I can replace them with more. The machine screws that I bought for um, for putting on the sensor brackets came with a matching number of nuts, which is way more than I'm ever going to need. Um, so I have a bunch of extras of those. And the big screws come, came with them too. <laughs> so no shortage of those if I need to replace them. Alright, so this is a more refined technique for um, drilling these holes that I'm using here. It ends up working much better. So I've marked them the same way, I start that the same way, uh, but at this point I get a bracket, put it on, make sure the markings look right and everything. Um, this is one of my spare brackets, I'm using it for all the drilling here. Um, fortunately all the holes seem to be in the same position, so the real brackets go on just fine. So I'm aligning it so that the bottom of the holes in the bracket matches up to the center of the marked holes on the wood. So that way, I actually have a physical guide for the drill bit to stop against. It's on three sides, which is enough. Um, I could still err if I if I go upward. Uh, I tried to use a bubble level here to see um, to see how well I'd done with getting the bracket straight. It, it didn't work super well though because my floor is not level those two by threes that the thing is propped on are not level so that wasn't super useful but um, just eyeballing it seemed reasonably good if I can't see it being off then it's not off for it enough to ma enough for it to matter these clamps are not the strongest thing in the world but they held up for this process at least I could have used stronger ones if they were not good enough but they seem to be So I'm placing the drill bit against the bottom of the sensor hole this time, as well as the sides. I'm kind of pulling it toward me just a little bit to make sure it's in that hole really well. Since this is a spare bracket, uh, that doesn't bother me too much if it gets beaten up a little bit by this. This one gets a little bit scarily close to my hand as I'm drilling. But the thing with a drill is that it's not a tool that tends to... Um, it's not a tool that tends to kick out to the side violently pretty much ever. So even though it feels like I'm kind of close to something dangerous, it's actually quite safe. So all drilled, same stuff, tuck the extra little bits of wood that are sticking out into the holes, put the threaded inserts back on, as before. I 
I think I have like a couple of extra ones of these in case I lose some, but uh, not enough extra for me to screw up as many times as I did. So it was kind of important to be able to recover them if I if I get something wrong and need to redo. I'm working with these small pieces of wood now because I don't want to be screwing up on the, the big ones. Because uh, those are harder to replace. So those hold still there. Sand it again, as always. Let's get filled with sawdust. <laughs> but it comes out real easy. So real bracket going on there. You can still see the one I used to drill over on the right. This one's already been filed and lubricated. So once it's on, moves up and down. Real nice. Sensor fits in. And the whole thing is nice and level. So, now I just have to do this like uh, 27 more times, I think. Because I have five of those done. and need a whole bunch more. <laughs> uh, anyway. I have some other stuff to show at some point. Um, there was a little bit of footage that didn't quite fit in here. Um, but yeah, I might... This might be every four days. I don't know. It just depends on how much progress I make, how much footage I can get. So I'll see you next time for some other step of this.